We're in the building. After two long years, we are in the building. And I just, I can't imagine the turnout. I am so happy to see my folks, my community in full force. I mean, I can even see my Instagram crush, so that's a bit of a... I know you can't tell, but I am blushing. But uh, back to the matter at hand. And like Rimka, I'm going to be keeping my word of thanks towards the end. As a documentarian, or have to introduce myself for those that don't know me, my name is Kavena, uh, but I'm affectionately known to this community as Kat. As a documentarian with origins from Namibia, I'm interested in entry points. Entry points that reveal caveats that have been swathed over by dominant narratives. My installation explores my individual history against the broader collective history of arguably the first genocide of the 20th century. Unbeknownst to many, the Herero Nama genocide in Southwest Africa now Namibia, not only occurred three decades prior to the genocide in Europe, or the Shoah in Europe, it was committed by the same perpetrator, Germany. Using the Namibian flag and the Oshikaiva as an entry point, this exhibition allows me to lean into my ancestry as a descendant of the victims of the Hereronama genocide. I engaged with traditional textiles, solid red and black of the Herero nation, and patch dotted fabrics of the Nama people, along with yellow dotted pins representing the colors of the German flag, red, black, and yellow. This work becomes tactile and allows the viewer to physically feel the labor, a reference to my ancestors who perished under the harsh conditions of the concentration camps of the Second Reich. I seek to connect nodes of history that tell a story of shared resilience despite the ongoing colonial and racial oppression. One such contemporary example is the case of a certain former U.S. president who in 2017 met with a group of African leaders at the United Nations General Assembly and seemingly invented a new country, Nambia, which was a reference, of course, to Namibia. This is another example, and I'm sure you can guess which president that was. <laughs> this was another example of how racial hierarchies are perpetuated and how we continue as Africans to be erased. Therefore, the gesture of spelling out Namibia phonetically is not only a correction, but an act of defiance, a literal a literal form of resistance. You see, the work is not merely, does not merely relitigate history. Through my documentary practice, which is my preferred medium, we also explore the possibilities that lay ahead. I got that one from Mary. No? <laughs> so I'm going to give you a small morsel, a small taste of the short film that is accompanying this work, funded by the African American and Black Studies Program through the Black Studies Collaboratory. You, in the gallery, sorry, in the museum space, will only see a five minute, five minute extract. But on, on the 29th of June, the Joyce Gordon Gallery down in Oakland, we will have a, yes, shout out to Joyce Gordon. limited screening with only 50 tickets available, and then we'll have the premiere of Joffrey's on the 2nd of September. But here's a, a short snippet of what to expect.
I'm a direct descendant of the genocide. My family were here in Namibia. When the German came, what they did is to take their land. My uh, grandmother was married to, to this German guy, and my father's own father was also a German. I'm a third generation. Uh, descendant of the victims of the 1904-1908 of a Heteronama genocide. And we had this long night of kind of like catching up of the past whatever it was many years and um, at the end of that he um, that conversation led to him talking about um, Swakopmund and the fact that Swakopmund is in fact um, the site of a former German concentration camp. My great-grandmothers and my great-grandfathers survived uh, the genocide. In fact, some of them came out of the concentration camps. This year, Namibians are looking back over a century of one of the most inhuman and brutal colonialist periods in history. We are named after the beautiful Namib Desert, which uh, translates into shield. And this shield has guided us from early onset colonialism. We were one of the last African countries to be colonized because of the desert from which derives the name Namibia. And I remember the moment we were driving in the car, he was taking me to the airport, and he said almost in passing um, that was a site of a genocide. And I I can't describe the feeling, but it took, it was like a hook in my lung to look at a friend and say, what do you mean? You know, most of our mothers was raped by these soldiers, hmm. these German soldiers, this is where we came now from. And our th fathers were just left with no father there to grow up with no fathers, a single mother in poverty, they did really harm to our communities. The social structure of our communities were broken down. My great great grandfather, Kapungirwe Wakawanje, was the first fighter to fire the first shots against the German occupation troops in Namibia. A hundred years ago, German colonialists invaded my country, and when the people revolted against the theft of their land, the Germans retaliated by wiping out 40,000 of the 60,000 of our Herero people and over 11,000 of our 20,000 Namas, men, women, and children. The issue was for them to take the land. So what they have to do is to kill any human person walking on two feet. During colonialism, particularly during the period 1904-1908, our people lost their most valuable asset, and that is the land. The land that possesses so much, the land on which our cattle were grazing, the land that is so highly spiritually connected to our culture and our own existence. No wonder that a hundred years later, our population is only just over one million. Germany lost the First World War and with it its colonies, but this did not mean the end of our suffering. South Africa took over and turned the sacred trust of the international community into the brutal mandate that my country has become. South Africa managed Namibia like a fifth province. They basically marched in, annexed Namibia, and instead of managing Namibia like a sea mandate, handing over Namibia to the Namibians, they managed Namibia like a fifth province of South Africa. They introduced apartheid, and they introduced uh, the Bantustans, the homelands, and the same repressive and restrictive policies and politics that they did in South Africa with the black people in South Africa.